and welcome back to Contemporary Black Voices, folks. We're talking about the tragedy in Haiti. And so Chris and I, again, we were talking off camera, and we were talking about the uh, the Kenyan police force that's coming, right? And so uh, we were talking about the, uh, uh, the, the this, this changing dynamic with the uh, this armament, right? With the uh, this, these newly armed, heavily armed uh, gangs in Haiti, we were talking about what the King, what these, what the King, Kenya police forces are gonna uh, are gonna run into. And, uh, Chris, yeah. well, it, it seems like uh, the United States is uh, becoming involved mm -hmm. in what's called the proxy, or, mm -hmm. or or what I term as a proxy war. They're not sending any American soldiers mm -hmm. to any place in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to have recalibrated and said, we're not going to send any of our soldiers, but what we're going to do is we're going to send the technology, we're going to send money, we'll send anything other than human right. lives. Right. Okay? Right. So now since the Kenyans are starting to go in there, it seems to me to be that the United States, the only way that they can fund anything, they're not going to fund the rebels in Haiti, so they would fund the Kenyans to be able to make sure that they can fight against those rebels mm -hmm. who are there. And it seems like to me, here, here, here's the thing that I think that I would like you to address, mm -hmm. is that if, if the Colombians are supporting the rebels, but the United States is supporting the Kenyans, mm -hmm. the Colombians are saying we're supporting those rebels in Haiti because we really want to get to the oil that's in Ghana, okay? It seems like the United States has a conflict. I mean, you know what? Like I said, it does, this, again, I'm, I'm highly suspicious uh, how someone can break into a military base <laughs> and have the time to, the hours to load uh, boxes and boxes of rifles and boxes and boxes of grenades and boxes and boxes of ammunition and then drive it right off the base Put it on a plane or a boat and send it to Haiti. So I mean that 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 is highly suspicious, and uh, and it, it, it ends up in Haiti and 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 they're, they're into the to, to the arms. Of, it didn't end up in the arms of the Haitian police force. It ended up in the arms of the uh, second gang. You know what I mean? Who are allied with the uh, with the Colombian uh, drug cartels, and so uh, that's highly suspicious. And so again, you have the the U.S. is they they. Those Kenyan troops aren't going to swim to Haiti. They're going to, yeah. they're going to, they're going to be. They're, of course, they're going to be transported on U.S. transports. Uh, the U.S. is playing a heavy hand. They're going to be based out of the uh, the airport in in, in Port-au-Prince. Uh, the U.S. again is going to supply the uh, uh, satellite intelligence, uh, probably drone intelligence, uh, because the Haitian gangs have their own drones. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, these guys are they, they're heavily armed, uh, and they're getting trained. So the U.S. is going to provide uh, training, uh, again, uh, uh, funding, uh, ammunition, logistics, food, everything that the, the, uh, this Kenyan-led multinational force is going to need. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's setting up to be a, uh, uh, a tragic uh, event uh, because, of course, caught in the middle will be the Haitian people. You know what I mean? So you're going to have these, these two forces, uh, heavily armed forces, that are, are going to be basically battling on the streets of Haiti. How soon do you think we will see uh, the uh, Kenyan forces in Haiti? Uh, any day now. They, they are scheduled to deploy any day now. And so, again, it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, again, I'm just, I, I, my, my fears are for the Haitian people, the innocent Haitian uh, civilians that are going to be caught. Because the mandate is to take back Haiti. The mandate is to retake control of these streets block by block. Uh, and so that, that means street fighting, that means block by block. Uh, it's going to be civilians caught in the middle. It's going to be women and children that are caught in the middle. And so it's, uh, and these gangs are not going to cede control. Let me ask you a, another question, which is for me a, very interesting. When we went to uh, Afghanistan and places like that, mm -hmm. we as the United States were met with opposition from uh, these different type of militia groups. Right. And those militia groups didn't have uniforms on, right. so you could not identify them from a regular citizen right. to who was in the military. <laughs> so it seems like to me, now that I begin to think about this, is that you are taking a militarization mm -hmm. type of approach to Haiti to say we want to make sure that they have uniforms so we know who we're killing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that could be it too. You know what I mean? We want them. To, we want them to be in uniform so we know who's there. Right. But it, it's all, it's a couple of gangs that are that are 
forming these that are morphing into militias where the, uh, there are other ones that are not. Okay. So they're still going to be looking at just like civilians. Uh, and you raise a good point because uh, when we did initially go into uh, Iraq, uh, we had a lot of support for the Iraqi people until we started uh, kicking in doors and until we started uh, uh, these, these, uh, the civilian deaths got out of control uh, and then we lost the people. And so again, there's always that risk in Haiti uh, depending on how this multinational force goes in there, depending on how what tactics they use, how heavy-handed they are, uh, whether we will have the support of the Haitian people or whether the Haitian people will uh, not view this as an exercise in liberation, but an exercise in occupation. And so that's one of the reasons why you see the U.S. being very, very careful, because there's a history of U.S. invasion and occupation uh, and I think the, and, and, the world. and I think our government, especially with this Biden administration, has to be very careful. It's an election year in America, so you don't want to say anything or do anything right now that would piss the American people off mm -hmm. or to send them to a uh, to the Republican regime right. because the Republican regime definitely is not going to support Haiti, right. and they would do everything they could to be able to defeat Haiti. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you cannot as an American government right now, say that you're going to let the Haitian refugees into America mm -hmm. until after the election. Now, after the election, when our president becomes a lame duck, should we elect Biden, mm -hmm. then at that particular point in time, you can do a lot of things that you wouldn't do as a first-term president. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, again, so Haiti is, it, it's, it's, it's a tragedy. And so th there's a risk of the administration not doing anything. Uh, you know, there is a uh, the there's a risk of turning off voters. They're saying, you know what, you know, you didn't do anything about Haiti. You know what I mean? You didn't do anything to help Haiti. You didn't. Uh, that this this administration is running the risk. It's the same risk that they are running uh, in not helping the Palestinian people. People are really upset with this administration, saying that they needed to do more. Uh, you can't. And this administration is is uh, thinking they can have it both ways. They think they can send munitions to Israel and food to, Pal to the Palestinians. You know what I mean? Well, guess what? If you stop sending munitions to Israel, the Palestinians, you won't have to send right. food to the Palestinians. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, this administration has played it wrong. Uh, uh, they played it wrong in in uh, this initiative that they that they've taken uh, should have been taken a long time ago. Uh, they should have helped Haiti out a long time ago. Uh, they should have uh, taken a more active role in, in helping the Palestinian people. And so this administration already uh, has already turned off a lot of voters. Voters are not enthusiastic. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of voter enthusiasm uh, is not for the administration, but against the alternative. You know what I mean? So that the, the alternative is kind of what's motivating people to, 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 to uh, uh, get out there and, and support this administration. It's not that they're enthusiastic about anything this administration has done or about any of its policies. Well, let me ask you two questions as we begin to close this segment. Mm -hmm. One is, how does or does the United States try to make sure that you have democracy mm -hmm. in Haiti? Mm -hmm. And what is your feelings as to what you would like to see mm -hmm. uh, to happen? And what do you think uh, the chances are of those things happening? Uh, so, you know, again, the, the administration needs to do something that I don't think, I don't think this country has the ability to do, and that's reconcile with its racial history, reconcile with its racial past. Uh, it, sh it needs to uh, open up uh, itself and open up uh, the Haitian economy uh, and, 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 and invest in Haiti. Uh, the other thing, again, I, I am uh, I'm a member of an organization called uh, Black Professionals in International Affairs, and we definitely need to see more faces that look like us in the international affairs arena so that when we are in the room, when decisions like this are being made, uh, we can provide a voice, uh, be a voice for people that look like us, for countries that look like us. So that's one of the things I would love to see is more people, more, more young people get involved or mid-career folks get involved in international relations, international affairs, so that we can, we can be a voice for our people. 
Uh, those are the things that I would like to see. The 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 being a voice is more realistic. Uh, this country reconciling its racial history is not very realistic. <laughs> and so I guess that that same question goes back to you. What do, what do you think? Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to answer that question. <laughs> but uh, uh, I w I would hope that uh, we would get more of a global situation that America would be able to. Uh, have democracy in uh, in in Haiti, mm -hmm. and I would like to see that government be set up and some type of civility mm -hmm. be set up in mm -hmm. in uh, in Haiti. Because I also don't know we didn't get a chance to get into it, but how that's going to spill over right. into the Dominican Republic. Right. So, so join us for hot topics, <laughs> and uh, yeah, join us today for hot topics. We got some really hot topics coming up, folks. And uh, just a, a note. We need to ensure our own democracy before we think, before we worry about Haiti's democracy because our democracy is on the ballot uh, this November, folks. So make sure we're still in democracy in November. And again, thank you for joining us today, uh, Contemporary Black Voices, and stay tuned for Hot Topics.